Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new real life car review. In this episode I'm driving the Toyota Yaris Cross in GR Sport Trend. The Toyota Yaris Cross entered the showrooms in 2021. It is a second small crossover in the Toyota lineup next to the CHR. The Yaris Cross shares its underpinnings with the regular Yaris, but it has a raised ride height and it offers more interior space and more cargo capacity. The Yaris Cross takes many design cues from other Toyota crossovers, like the RAV4 and Corolla Cross. It even has design influences from the Mirai, if you look at the front. It is a blend of various Toyota models, but it really has a unique appearance. What do you think of the exterior design? Let me know down below in the comments. Now one very distinct design feature of the Toyota SUV lineup and all the crossovers are the squared out wheel arches. There's a large wheel gap in the back here that suggests a lot of suspension travel. However, I don't think it's much different from the regular Yaris or Yaris Cross models. For the GR Sport versions, Toyota made the same changes as in the Yaris GR Sport. Um, the spring rate is different, the, uh, the shocks are different, the bushings in the suspension are different and it has a faster steer rack and only the GR Sport version comes with these nice 18 inch wheels and those are wrapped in Goodyear tires in size 2 1550 and what I noticed that these top ends of the tires are very round and there is this nice rim protector on here but I do like these tires especially for the ride and comfort they're quiet they're very grippy and the roll resistance is very low the rear of the Yaris Cross also gets a custom made bumper with this diffuser part made into it. Um, this red light beam is the same on all Yaris Cross models but it has this sequential LED blinkers and of course the taillights are full LEDs. Got this spoiler as it's standard on everything and it has a kick function to open the boot, it's fully electric. Let's get the camera up close and have a peek inside the trunk. And the GR Sport version, I think like all version, has a double trunk floor. And when you have these panels, there are two panels in fact. On the upper level you get flush, almost flush with this sill. Now one thing to note is this partial shelf, which isn't a partial shelf, it isn't a board or anything. But it's one of those thingies that looks like a window shade for kids for the rear windows. Uh, you pull it out, it's a light and flimsy thing, but the benefit of it is when you twist it, now you got rid of a large partial shelf. When you have to transport taller cargo, um, yeah, you got stuck with a large partial shelf, but not with this. You fold it together, put it in the trunk floor, and you get rid of it. And the rear seats fold in a 60-40 split, and when they go down, they're almost flat you get a real nice large cargo space, so there's nothing to complain cargo space wise. Ok, let's have a peek under the hood. Under here in the GR Sport version you always get a 1.5 hybrid, which is basically the same engine as in the normal Yaris GR Sport. Um, the Yaris Cross is available with two engine options, the non-hybrid and the hybrid 1.5, which is basically the same engine. The uh, engine displacement is the same, the bore and stroke are the same, but this hybrid version gets different camshafts to uh, be able to operate in the Atkinson cycle. The normal 1.5 has 125 horsepower and can be mated to a manual 6-speed gearbox or a CVT transmission and that those two engine options can tow 1325 kilos from the top of my head but with a hybrid drive, drive frame you can only tow uh, 750 kilos uh, outputs are a bit different the regular versions have 125 horsepower whereas this hybrid version has a combined system output of 160 horsepower but basically drivetrain options are the same as in the Yaris hatchback now the interior of the Yaris Cross is very familiar if you're coming out of a regular Yaris. All is basically the same. This GR Spar version gets this nice red stitching and it got 
GR badges all over the place. There's a small one in the instrument cluster and on startup it shows a GR badge animated in the center gates cluster. One thing that's different from the Yaris models is that this uh, traditional gates cluster with an analog power gates, fuel and temperature gates uh, are for the top trim levels, whereas the base trim levels get the binocular uh, instrument cluster. And on the regular Yaris, that's the other way around. The binocular uh, instrument panel is only for the top of the range versions. Uh, I like this better, it's easier to read. In terms of pros and cons, it's the same as with the Yaris. Uh, some buttons are tucked away, the heated steering wheel button is here, but I see I do have a heated front window. Uh, or does it heat? Hmm, that's an interesting button, I'm gonna test that out later. And the window for the uh, automatic high beams is over here. It has a dual zone climate control, it has heated seats with these nice big knobs over here, I like it. And they look a bit dated, but like anything dated from Toyota, things work after 40, 50 years still. And this have a nice big clunky click to it. I like that. There are a lot of buttons on the steering wheel, but it's something you get used to within an hour of driving. One thing I can get used to is this. Every time I want to open the door, I grab over here. This is where I expect the door grip and the door lever to be, but they change positions. And I said in the previous test that's something you can get used to, but every time I drive a Yaris or a Yaris Cross, I grab over here when I want to open the door and I want to open a window, I look for the buttons by muscle memory over here. That's something I can get used to, but that can be me. One reason to choose the Yaris Cross over the regular Yaris is the rear space. Wait until it's done beeping. When I open up the rear door, you have the same as with the Yaris hatchback, that these doors don't swing open that wide. I think it's 70 degrees and I think it really should be approximately 90 degrees for easier ingress and egress. On a positive note, the seating position is very nice. Uh, the seat is deep enough for me, for my length. The seat back is at a nice angle. I can stow my feet under the front seat. But it is very basic, also for a top of the range model. There are no outlets, no USB charges, no 12 volt outlets, nothing. There isn't a vent in here. Um, it's very basic, I do have plenty of headroom. And when I pull this little thingy on top of the center section of the seat back I get an armrest with two cup holders. Now let's test a few towards the outside. There's a small window but it fully sinks in and few towards the outside is good. Um, all in all it's not half bad but it's very basic in here. Now I've been driving this car for almost a week and I got used to switching off the lane assist. Keep my thumb on the button for three seconds, lane assist is off like I want it. It gets into your system. One thing to note about the Yaris Cross, as with the regular Yaris and especially the hybrid versions, is the incredible great fuel economy you get. The brochure calls for 4.4 liters per 100 kilometers on average. Um, that includes highway driving. Now I haven't done a lot of highway driving, a lot of end roads, national roads over here, but my fuel economy at this moment is at 4.2 liters per 100 kilometers. And that's amazing given the size of this car. I am aware that this is the smallest Toyota crossover, but still it's a practical family car for Western European standards that is. With this fuel economy, yeah, you can go wrong. You can tell that the suspension setup of the GR Sport model is different, like the, the GR Sport version of the regular, regular Yaris. Um, it is it's more dynamic, but not up to a point where it gets obnoxious, like in a real sports car. Of course, Toyota doesn't do that. Um, but, but more than in the regular Yaris, I can tell that the steering rack is faster, and I can tell that during every drive, no matter I drive calm or have a more spirited drive, I love the setting and the setup of the uh, of the steering rack, which is which is very nice. 
Now this being a crossover, it has a higher center of gravity, but it doesn't translate into more body roll. Uh, I would say on the contrary, I think they also change the stabilizers, uh, the, the sway bar. And when you go into a corner with a bit more speed, you carry more speed into a corner, uh, you can tell that it stays really flat. Now I go really calm around this roundabout, otherwise the camera would tip over. But when you carry a lot of speed into corners, the car is very stable. It's down to the good your tires, which are very good in my opinion, the larger wheel size, but in all the whole suspension setup is noticeably different. Now back to prices and specifications. There are nine trim levels over here. I won't uh, go into detail of them all. But the base trim level starts at nearly 28,000 euros. Uh, in that car, you don't get an audio system. You only get two built-in speakers and a manually controlled air conditioning. The stop of the range version with all the bells and whistles sells for almost 42,000 euros. And when you up for the glass sunroof, the panoramic sunroof, you can get over the 42,000 euros. And that's the most expensive Yaris cars we have here. Now that almost 28,000 euros for a base model without any stereo and navigation sounds a bit steep, but what Toyota does, they add their safety system called Safety Sense, or it's rebranded Teammate, I believe nowadays, it is standard on all cars, and that includes adaptive cruise control, automatic high beams, lane assist, the whole shebang. Um, also, when you back up from a parking spot or want to pull up into an intersection, and the uh, safety suite sees oncoming traffic that uh, you can collide into, the car just stops, it doesn't want to drive further. And also when you have oncoming traffic swerving towards you, uh, into your lane, uh, the car helps you to avoid uh, oncoming traffic that's in your lane. And also, and I think that's the most valuable option, uh, the radar system and the parking sensors uh, keep track of small obstacles around the car when you're maneuvering, like into a parking garage or in a parking spot. Uh, sometimes you don't see those small concrete poles you have uh, in, in parking garages, and when you turn in too much, you would run the side in the of the car into one of those poles. You don't want to have that. And that system, the teammate slash safety sense uh, Toyota offers as standard, even on the Igo Cross uh, super small uh, car, it really prevents a lot of those parking damages. And why is that important? Well, insurance wise, it's really interesting because these cars really can avoid those small parking damages, those tiny little fender benders when you hit another car uh, when parking. That's really a nice thing to have. You can argue that the prices of Toyotas over here are steep. They sure as heck aren't the cheapest option, but with that safety suite they have and the 10 years warranty, yes, 10 years warranty, um, it's really a no-brainer to opt for a Toyota. Now we're doing a little stretch of highway driving, got a car currently on the adaptive cruise control, nice new pavement, you can tell that the car is quiet, I think larger wheels do affect the roll-off noise from the, the road noises. Uh, in my memory, I read back my previous test of the Aris Cross. The regular version is a bit more quiet, but all in all this car is very quiet. Only now and then you hear the three-cylinder spool up, add a little power to the drivetrain. The car does a lot of electric driving, even at highway speeds for shorter stretches, but it does help especially to decrease the fuel economy. But in terms of noise and drive comfort, it's a quiet car. The suspension is indeed a bit more harsh than the regular version of the Yaris Cross. I hear a little bit of wind noise around the mirrors. I'm not sure if the microphone picks it up. Maybe it does. I'm gonna decrease the following distance to the car in front of me. Pick up some speed. This, this top version is equipped with a GBL audio system which sounds very nice and very good to my ears. 
I always notice that the uh, standard audio in modern Toyota sounds very good. The GBL system adds a little bit to it. It's a bit bass heavy, uh, but to my ears, it's a very good sound system. Uh, when you come from a Lexus with a Mark Levinson audio, you'll immediately notice the difference. But for what it is, it's a very nice audio system. So after a week of driving in the Toyota Yaris Cross in Geo Sport, and I can only say that it's a great car to drive. Um, in terms of cost, uh, it is on the expensive side of things, but the um, lot safety suite you have and the ability to afford to avoid small parking damages that's a real great thing to have and i can tell that like i said in the drive segment insurance companies pick up on that so in terms of cost it makes a lot of sense and with the 10 years of warranty you would say it's a no-brainer now with 42,000 euros the geo sport version is uh, on the expensive side of things yes it's a lot of money for a car but if you plan to keep a car long term i would say it's almost a no-brainer I had a lot of fun driving this car and I have been driving the regular Yaris Cross version also. I had a lot of fun driving that car too. Now with that I would like to thank you for watching this real life car review. I hope you liked following me along and if you did give me a like, leave a comment if you have any questions, maybe subscribe to the channel it helps me out making these videos a big deal. And for now I would like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye!